Hello, gorgeous souls. Welcome to a fabulous little mini webinar on Halloween asteroid astrology. Hello, for those of you not familiar, welcome to my channel, The Starseed Sanctuary. My name is Dr. Heather Hobson, and I'm the CEO and fabulous operator, owner, healer of this magical, mystical page that you're watching right now. I am a professional astrologer, and I specialize in starseed astrology and asteroid astrology. It's one of my favorite things, among all the other mystical, magical things that I do. So in this mystical, magical webinar, I'm going to be walking you through how to find some of these Halloween themed asteroids in your natal chart. And I'm going to deep dive into one of them and what they mean in the signs and the houses. So let's get into it. Okay. So combining two of my favorite things here, Halloween and asteroid astrology, these are the main Halloween themed asteroids that I'm going to go over with you. The first one, Hecate, um, is number 100 in the asteroid, um, in Astrodentist. I'll show you how to actually find all of this, too, if you're not that familiar. Um, so Hecate is the goddess of witches. She represents many different things astrologically, but an overview is reclaiming our magic and where mystical and magical powers are, too, in your natal star chart. Then we have Samantha. Bewitched. She's the witch from Bewitch, the magical mother archetype of witches. We also have Sabrina, the teenage witch, giving princess witch archetype vibes there. Then we have Circe, which is the enchantress. She represents transformation through mysticism in the star chart. Medea, who really is associated with the media or newscasting, spells of the media as well, also represents word casting, spell casting, where that shows up in our natal star chart could give you some really powerful insights into how to use your words more magically. Words are spells. That's why it's called spelling, people. <laughs> then we have Transylvania, home of Dracula, um, and vampire tendencies. This could show where you're more likely to have vampiric entities attach, as well as where you might be more prone to be an energy vampire. We can all go there in our shadow selves if we're not careful. Um, Arachne, we have also spiders. Um, this can represent boastfulness or disdain for authority associated with that Greek mythology. Then we have wolf, um, asteroid wolf represents a resonance with werewolves or similar creatures of the night. Um, we had to throw Merlin in there for some wizard, right? Wizard energy here, the magician, the alchemist. Then we have Lucifer, the fallen angel. This shows up in the chart where we defy norms, where we might be more prone to interact with things that are associated with evil even. Then we have angel, openness to receiving divine inspiration. That'll show up where you're open to receiving or where you're going to get um, more divine inspiration in your natal star chart. And then, of course, spirit asteroid, connection with the spirit world of ancestors, because Halloween is all about honoring the deceased, honoring our ancestors, among other many other magical and mystical things. So how to find Halloween themed asteroids in your natal astrology chart. So I'm going to walk you through how to do this. But first, let me just talk about what's on this page right here. So you're going to go to astro.com. That's the address. It's astrodentist, astro.com. You're going to create a free profile or log in if you already have one. Then you're going to go to extended chart selection, plug in your birth info, Scroll down to additional objects, and in that box where it says manual entry, you're going to plug in these numbers. Um, and I am, oops, let me go back here, guys. <laughs> okay, you're going to plug in these numbers and then click display. Bonus, you can also change the start date in section one to October 31st to see how these asteroids are actually transiting your chart on the Halloween holiday. Okay. So let's go to Astrodentus and I'm going to show you. So this astro.com, I already have a profile set up. So I'm just going to log into mine. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my, okay. We're agreeing to the privacy. We're going to go to here, extended chart selection. 
You can pause this and open up your browser to do this with me, okay? So create a free profile if you don't have one already or log in to your free profile on astro.com. Extended chart selection. Okay, and let's say, let's put in the date here for October 31st. So we're going to get the transit chart for that day too. Um, if you have a specification, you want to do sidereal or a different house system, you can adjust that here. If you're new to that, I would just stick with what it has in the default. And then you're going to go to additional objects right here. Okay, where it says manual entry. I'm going to come back to this and I'm going to copy and paste those numbers into this little section here. Okay. So it's 100, 3147, 2264, 34, 212, 1537, 407, 5674, 2598, 1930, 8813, 11911, and 375452. Sorry. So you can just kind of screenshot that last page, plug it in here, okay? Um, I'm also going to add those numbers in the, like, text box for the YouTube video. So you can just cut, copy, and paste them from that too, okay? So once you have all those Halloween-themed asteroids in there, you're going to click Show the Chart. And it will display where these fall in your natal star chart, okay, in your birth, in your birth chart. And then you can also hit right here with transits, okay? And it'll show you on Halloween, that's the date I have on Halloween, where these are in the sky, okay, in relationship to your natal star chart. Um, so that's how you do it in astro.com. I'm going to go back to our fabulous little webinar here, and we're going to continue the presentation. Okay, so now that you know how to do that, um, you can get your Halloween themed asteroid natal star chart with the transits. Super fun. Check out. Okay, and I'm going to do a deep dive into what Hakate means in the natal star chart. If I was going to do all 13 of those, it would take us forever, but this is the most important one. <laughs> so, so in Greek mythology, Hakate was the goddess of magic, witchcraft, the night, moon, ghosts, and necromancy. Her origin far predates any culture or tradition, and she is the keeper of the keys to the underworld and the crossroads between life and death, endings and transitions. She often is depicted with sacred symbols of keys, dogs, torches. And in the natal star chart, she represents the way through our shadow how the sign Hakate is in and what areas of our life, the house that she's in, we find our way, how we discern our direction through the unknown territory of life. And Hakate, the sign also shows the archetypal expression of our inner magic, of our innate magic encoded into the star chart. The house placement shows where we go to find lost parts of ourselves. And themes around reclaiming our inner magic, embracing this dark feminine power within. And that's not evil. That's not bad. It's just this like shunned and repressed part of us that needs to come out so we can integrate all parts and feel whole. When it's very prominent in the natal chart, this person will possess the same kind of energy, powerful, efficient when consciousness, but can be dangerous and stuck in the crossroads, susceptible to evil if not aware or when unaware, easily led down the wrong path. I have Hakate in my eighth house, you guys, conjunct heiress. So in formative years, I definitely was unaware and was led down many a wrong paths, chose many a wrong paths. Now that I'm more aware, you know, it's interesting working with astrology, archetypal astrology, my unique blend of starseed astrology that does integrate a lot of these other asteroids, minor planets, nebulas, black holes, fixed stars, of course. It's so magical how it can expand your awareness in such a way where you're able to make more conscious decisions, where you're able to evolve at such a greater depth. And just to be of service to others to do the same. So consciousness and being aware is 
fully magically unlocked with astrology, especially asteroid astrology. So Hakate in the signs. Go and look at your natal star chart once you plug that in, um, asteroid number 100, and see what sign it's in. I'm going to walk you through what that potentially means. Of course, it's going to mean various different things for different people if it has conjunctions to other planets, luminaries, other asteroids, um, including big major aspects too. But in general, Hakate through the signs. So Hakate in Aries is asking for us to really notice this energy where it's showing up in the natal star chart, asking to speak to us. She's really telling people with Hakate and Aries to be fiercely independent in your magic. You don't need to conform to being a magical person, a mystical person, or doing magic, you know, in whatever stereotypical way that it's portrayed, right? You need to be independent. You need to do it in your own unique way with what feels good to your soul. Even too, with Hecate and Aries, it's like being a pioneer, being a leader in that way with your magic, maybe even creating a different new magical type of ritual that no one's ever done, right? Really like boldly walk that path. Hecate and Taurus really reminds us it's time to experience the pleasures of the five senses as we partake of the garden of life. So letting ourselves feel secure enough to make the right decision, that is magic in itself, Hecate and Taurus. Hecate and Gemini tends to seek and devour massive amounts of information about magic, witchcraft, astrology, esoteric arts. And they can be very skilled communicators on such subjects. And the light is bright and they may attract many enemies because of this. So need to be really careful with that placement. Hakate and cancer represents the madness that ensues when we try to ignore our instinctual and emotional responses. So Hakate and cancer people need to use more moon guidance in discernment of the path. That also includes your emotional and intuitive discernment. You might even need to let the thought process be stilled and really just connect back into your intuitive centers more. So you're not getting swept up in the tidal waves of emotion. Hakate in Leo represents the petulance and sometimes dissatisfaction that manifests when we ignore what makes us special. The magic of Hakate and Leo is that you really need to trust your gut instincts, even if it seems selfish or egotistical to do so. You need to honor um, your core values, you know, the things that you feel really sentimental about. And I think also to this creative magic that spurs from Hakate and Leo. Hakate and Virgo really reminds people with this placement to be helpful, to allow, you know, constructive criticism, to be a guide for others who need assistance. We don't want to be overly critical, but there can be magic in giving feedback on certain things related or associated with Hakate, endings, beginnings, um, a crossroads in our life, magical gifts and abilities, right? So Hakate and Virgo people need to allow themselves to make that intuitive leap in their daily lives and daily effort to guide and protect those who need it. That's really a being of service, using your magical abilities to be of service with Hakate and Virgo. Hakate and Libra finds direction through social activities. This is someone that would definitely join a coven, right? That wants to be around other magical people um, that are into intellectual and artistic endeavors and really rely on the companionship of others to help guide you through difficult crossroads in your life, to help teach you and enhance your magical gifts and abilities. Hecate and Scorpio in the natal chart, there's a need here to go on your own and deeper into your mind and to go down deeper into the dark recesses of the soul. Shadow work is needed here to unlock your innate magic, to help you move through any challenging endings in your life or if you feel like you're at a crossroads. 
that is the only way to really dig out the truth so that you can provide direction and be of magical, mystical service to others. Really powerful with Hecate and Scorpio. Hecate and Sagittarius, here this placement really needs to go elsewhere to sometimes find direction in life. Um, guidance when you're at a crossroads or you're at some type of profound ending in your life is really found through religion, spirituality, philosophy, or sometimes long distance travel as well. There's a lot of magic that can get unlocked for Hecate and Sagittarius by going to other countries or just connecting with foreign cultures for direction and activation of that innate magic. Next, we have Hecate and Capricorn. So this placement in the natal chart is all about direction, is being found through hard work and dedication. That also unlocks your magical and mystical abilities by using your innate maturity and wisdom to help guide you and others on your path. Hecate in Aquarius possesses a very impartial, positive, almost like visionary based magic to guide others and have a clearer path forward. It's innovative, right? It's almost futuristic magic <laughs> um, through altruism, altruism and focusing on the good of the whole. There's a sense and direction that's realized for Hecate in Aquarius. And then finally, we have Hecate and Pisces. That's initially unclear sometimes for Hecate and Pisces, how you should go about finding your direction in life, finding your mystical or magical path. But ultimately, it has a lot to do with being compassionate to those who are down and out and living on a higher plane of consciousness while using the gifts of the unconscious. So dream work here can really activate your magical and mystical gifts and abilities. Spending some time alone can be really helpful as well. And then Hecate through the houses. So these are representative of the areas of life. Hecate shows up for you. If you have Hecate in the first house, you really need to learn to feel your truth in your physical body. There is literal magic that comes through your physical body. This, it feels like could really be like a claircognizant, um, a clairsentient person, um, someone who really activates their magic through movement, through the physical body. It's a part of who you are. People might even see you as a magical, mystical person, you might even seek you out as someone to guide them through difficult transitions in life at the crossroads in their life. Um, or this is something that you feel is like a continual theme for you. You keep coming to these weird forks in the road in your life. So it's so important with Hakate in the first house to feel your intuitive truth in your body, really connecting like the physical vessel with your, with your intuitive or emotional centers so you can make the most wise decisions, especially around magic and mysticism. And when you have big forks in the road throughout your life. Hakate in the second house is all about building self-esteem through listening to the self and values. Pleasure is a really big cue here for finding magic and finding your path when you feel lost. Um, and also to like, tactile, physical, tangible items can really unlock that magic or might be something you gravitate more towards. Hakate in the second house is someone that would really benefit from having like a physical altar, right? That you meditate in front of or that you um, worked with for ritual, like a candle altar or something like that. Hecate in the third house oscillates between private and public with your craft, with your magic, with your gifts, with your abilities, and you'll soar higher and higher when you learn to communicate with the right people at the right times about magic, mysticism, occult, or esoteric practices. That can sometimes be hard because sometimes people are really turned off by these topics, don't understand them fully, um, or have like repressed their own innate magic, you know? So it's really about finding the right people to communicate with um, so you don't feel like you have to hide your mystical magic in the closet with this one. Hakate in the fourth house, parents and ancestors here have a strong influence on your destiny. Um, there could even be an ancestral line of magic uh, magicians, witches, sorcerers, shamans, um, druids, all kinds of other things could show up here. Um, and so finding your path 
through the ancestors, through parents, through being patient, through being quiet, and through spending some time at, at home really could be helpful here. This is a very spiritual placement with Hakate in the fourth house. It's literally your roots. Your roots are grounded in magic and a lot of past parallel life um, imprints here around magic mysticism can come up. Hakate in the fifth house shows how to use play and uh, for comfort, how to use play and creativity to activate your inner innate magic, how to kind of lighten up um so you don't get trapped in like a black cloud and hakate in the fifth house you sometimes need to shed your naivete in order to see the true path before us there's a lot of magic that can get unlocked with hakate in the fifth by doing inner child work as well um even through like dating you know it sounds weird but a lot of magic could get unlocked through that as well Hakate in the sixth house is all about turning health practices for comfort, turning to health practices for comfort and knowledge when you feel lost, when you feel at a crossroads. There's so much wisdom with this placement in alternative medicine, magic that you can find and solace through pets and communicating with non-humans for assistance. So communicating with animals or nature spirits, elementals, or just other spirit guides in higher dimensions. Hakate in the seventh house, this one, your spouse with this placement, your natal chart, your spouse will dramatically change your life path usually in some way. And that could also activate your innate magic and mysticism. So relying on the advice of others to help you find the way here can be really helpful, especially in committed partnerships, long-term partnerships. Hakate in the eighth house, this is a really mystical, magical, deep placement for that. Um, would likely accent the crone guardian role at the gates of life. <laughs> Hakate here is a psychological counselor. I can attest to this as, you know, previously working as a psychologist, um, as her inner wisdom taps into the core of issues for others. You can really see other people's innate magic and mysticism when they don't see it. You know, and that's something really special, I think, with Hakate in the eighth house. Just important that you're also working on your own um, inner work, right? You're doing shadow work, that you're doing the ongoing work to protect your energy and deal with your own stuff so you can be a activator of magic and mysticism for others. Hakate in the ninth house shows how wisdom of philosophy and the higher mind and education can really help guide you when you're at a crossroads in your life and activate innate gifts and abilities. Meditation and study can also guide you when you don't know where to turn. Having some type of practice that's rooted in higher education, long distance travel, connection to foreign cultures, or just your general spirituality is really activating and grounding too here. Okay, so Hakate in the 10th house, this shows where you're known for emotional confidence or lack of it. So it's really important that you trust the voice of your own inner authority, of your own inner magic here. This is a placement where you might even be known in the community or you might leave a magical, mystical legacy of some kind behind. Hakate in the 11th house involves turning to friends for advice when you feel lost or you're at a crossroads. Friends, the communities that you choose to be a part of can often be the voice of reason and comfort. And connecting with the right groups can also really activate your innate magical mystical abilities deeper. And then finally, we have Hakate in the 12th house. You must turn to your own unconscious mind with this placement and trust the unseen when you feel lost or confused, when you're at a crossroads. So learning to trust that voice is really key to activating your magic and mystical abilities. Not trusting your intuition is the undoing, right? That can happen. All right, you guys, that was my Halloween asteroid astrology webinar. I hope you found it helpful. Happy Halloween. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already and let me know if you have any questions below. All right, sending you guys lots of love.